particular thing in, in Aikido. Uh, page 46, Ambassador Skills. So asking simple leading questions is almost effortless way to accomplish balance in the conversation. You can advance the dialogue and make use of the conversation for spiritual ends without seeming abrupt, rude, or pushy. Basically, you, you use questions to pull out of them what they believe and then lead the conversation where you, you, you want it to go. But Qu to get, but to get the leading uh, question or whatever question you have, you have to listen more than interrupt yeah. anyone. That's right. Making the talk. Of course. <laughs> from there, you can get yeah, I mean, I sure nine of us on how you compose your uh, constructor. He has it. But for us, we, we, uh, we don't, <laughs> we don't yeah. use this. It's like, <laughs> no, I mean, his, his tactic would be 70% listening, 30% talking, or maybe 80, 20 even. Mm -hmm. As, and we, you almost have to keep that. Uh, there's, I think in his books, he talks about, you know, kind of keeping the ratio. This idea that, yeah, you have to listen a majority of the time until you're at the point where now it's your, it's your, your turn. Your turn. To, to like present things. But <laughs> if, if you have everything that you need to so you're effective. <laughs> but if you're gardening, the questions are the, are the gardening, right? You're, you're preparing the field for the evidence. And you have, to, you, have to, yeah, you have to keep pulling them down. But you ask a three-word question and you listen for two minutes. And you ask a three-word question and you listen for two minutes. And that is not the way, well, definitely, the Filipino culture doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, but no, it would work on the Filipino really well because Filipinos are, are very interested in having the conversation. Uh, oh, yes. You're yeah. interested. Yes. Yes. Passionately talk. About the Bible, and then we discuss about it. But I think if if you could use a question, you well, see now that now she knows our tactics, it's not going to be as fun. <laughs> it, you 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 basically what he's talking about is narrating the debate. Is you ask questions to move the conversation in a direction you want to go. You build your foundation, and you 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 narrow and and guide the process until you get to the real issue. Because most people may not even know what the real issue is. They they make a claim, they make an assertion, or, or spout slogans that they've never thought of it before. And really, well, remember oh. Collins. The, his his. What his, do you his, believe? His um patient. his patient, one of his cancer patients, asked him. So what do you so believe? what do you believe? Because it's just like going through these slogans that Christianity is not real and it's just a bunch of whatever faith based whatever no evidence and the patient asked him so what do you believe and he got to thinking it's like i never had one i just you know <laughs> and just started mm. looking and looking and then he became a christian yeah, yeah and it, okay. that's just I'm that sure. yeah because he doesn't have no reasons he just bunches of slogan in his head and and he got tall it's just like yeah what do i believe i don't have nothing let me look you look, I mean, if you're a reasonable person, you're going to end up believing God. You, that's the conclusion. C.S. Lewis, um, uh, the brother of um, Christopher Hitchens. Hitchens, Peter Hitchens, his brother is a, you know, the, um, a, a strong, oh, but he has no, if you look at his reasoning, there's no reason. He just likes to talk and diverts the, the topic and he has no Oh my gosh. You're talking about Christopher. Christopher yeah, Hitchens. Christopher yeah. Hitchens. Yeah. Hitchens. He diverts the talk. Diverts the talk really because like he's kind of really, he's really the, the good. He's speaker. very charismatic and yeah. he, he never says anything. He never says anything. Yeah, I liked watching debates with him. I, I can't think of who was it. Address the topic. Uh, Turek. Turek right. talks about his first debate with, with Hitchens. He's like, you know, I just, I just love this guy. And then I went back and looked at the. The, the video, and he's like, he never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think some people, um, they respect some leaders so much that anything they say, they take it mm -hmm. without confirming mm -hmm. how true the statement that mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it happened to some of us so much. We respect a kind of religious leader so much, anything he says becomes law. Yeah. 
you know. So when you are arguing and they now push it, like you said, narrow you down, you now realize, oh, oh I don't have it. a basis. I only have it based on what I heard him say. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I think within the Christian sphere, we're really guilty of taking what someone has told us to believe, and not, but not it's not our belief because we haven't done the foundation to, to establish what it is we believe. We have somebody else's belief and we don't even recognize that we do. We have, to, we have to own our belief. We have to build the foundation for what it is we believe. Or it's not really our belief. It's somebody else's that we've taken blindly because, you well, they said it. And, and you respect that. Oh, I, I have so many of these that I've had to unlearn because when I've gone to the Bible, I'm like, it doesn't actually say that. You know, and, and it, it, it's so, so, said so. <laughs> but it, but it, it's shame on us because our job is to do what John tells us in first John, which is to test every it's spirit. spirit. Go prove it. No matter what someone says or no matter how much you respect them, you should verify it. If it's something you haven't not already. The angel of light comes to you. Go check it out. Go check it out. And I think it's a yeah. statement in the scripture where it says there are some people that they preach something to. I think Paul said they went back to confirm people they preached. Yeah, it's Paul. The, yeah, the so that's Berean. Paul, the Bereans. Bereans. That's the Bereans. The Bereans. <laughs> yeah, you, we should be more like the Bereans, Bereans. is what Paul yeah. says. Yeah. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Like yeah. with non Christians, it's like they decide on their worldview and then they make everything else fit, try mm -hmm. to fit into mm -hmm. that worldview. Instead of, you know, looking for the truth, they just want to peg all, all that oh, into there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Follow where the truth leads. They don't. Well, no. The, 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 the end, the, the really end thing for atheists is they don't want to be accountable to God. No, that's, that's the it. end of it. Because they don't want to have God because they want to be their own God. Because if there's a God above them, yeah. then they have to follow. It will restrict, it will restrict them. them. And they, they you know, be. But be because they want to be their own God. They, they, to call the shots and, you know. All of us do. Well, but we, we have do. to recognize that we're not very good at controlling our own. Yeah, we do. But you know that you're not. Yeah. Those people just don't want to accept that. Like, no, not at all. That's why Peter Hitchin is a strong atheist and his brother. He started... Well, brother, it's like the, said, it's Peter like, Hitchin, you're a reasonable person. Your Christianity is where you're going to end up. Your Christianity is where you're going to end up. That's what he said. Because it's like, how did you I tried the atheist, convert... Then I like trying all the so religions tried. in the world it's like nothing no, makes sense he first Christianity he is was, the one that makes sense the brother yeah the brother peter he was first a communist guy he adopted that and then he adopted something else something else and then he got into christianity and that is, that's 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 what makes sense he works he said like i don't have no crazy conversion that's like you know it's just it makes sense you know well, <laughs> that's the only one that makes sense, sense. it works and, and thankfully it does Page 49, Food for Thought. Now, this, this will probably be homework, because I don't think we have time to go through all these, these verses, but it was very interesting. Greg pulled out all these scriptures in the Gospels where Jesus is using this technique. You know, so the technique's ancient. I mean, Greg did not invent, invent it. Jesus always has questions. I know that. He always asks questions. I am good. Why did you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Why did you, you say? You call me good teacher. You say I'm. But I went. I went. And, I went and read through these this week, and it's like, you can just see it. You can see. What did you mean by that? What made you come to that conclusion? You, you can see it in the way. Yeah. So Jesus it's like. Was asking questions. Uh, and I think Jesus probably knows best. So that gives a lot of onus to this approach if the creator of the universe was using it on the first century. <laughs> yep. Well, think about how many times he reversed the question on people. I mean, almost... Yeah. Jesus always used a question to respond to a question, either for clarifying or to expose the underlying issues right what, what, what they, 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 they had the knowledge of the scripture but they didn't have the spirit of the scripture they weren't doing it out of love or out of you know yeah. the heart of god it was just yeah about the motives just one of motives is like so you're 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 exorcists what authority did it come to demons 
<laughs> well, but, yeah, uh, that's not on this list, but there's a, there, there, there are a bunch of these. Most of, it's in, the, most of these are interactions with the Pharisees, you, like the, uh, the oh, you know, why do you call, call me good? I mean, the, the, those are the scriptures. And it, it's very interesting to see. The law say. Yeah. Yeah, you ask them. So if they know <laughs> what the law says. But when you have the, the questions that we've been learning in mind and then you read the scripture, it, 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 you can see, oh, yeah, this, this, this is exactly the, the way you should address these things. Jesus didn't get defensive. He knew the answers. He didn't. He could have overwhelmed them with his knowledge, but it's not the approach that he took. Mm -hmm. And if if God took that approach, then it's probably the approach. Sure. Well, he's the he's the model. He's the model. I can follow. Answers that you you thought yourself sticks around versus answers that somebody told you. Yeah, that's true. If you come up with it yourself, it, it you you will forget it. <laughs> All right. Go to the next page. Just kind of. These, these next three sections are a little long, but it, it's a, turning the table. So if you're placed in a situation and you suspect your convictions will be labeled intolerant, bigoted, narrow-minded, judgmental, turn the tables. I, I like this because this is a situation that I, I've seen. Yeah, no, no, the culture. <laughs> when someone asks for your personal views about a moral issue, preface your remarks with a question. You've got to protect yourself, right? The, the cancellation. So you can say, you know, this is actually a personal question you're asking, and I'd be glad to answer. But before I do, I want to know if you consider yourself a tolerant person. Huh. Ooh, this is a loaded. You've you, you, them already. You, you, already yeah, you already expose, expose them, them, right? Uh-huh. So is it safe to give my opinion, or are you going to judge me on my point of view? Ask them right up yeah, front. And I think this is excellent advice. Yeah, yeah. Do you respect diverse points of view or do you condemn others for convictions that differ from, from yours? yours. Yeah. Ouch. Yes. This is what they're about ready That's to do about to you. Do. That's about to do to you. If they tell you they are tolerant, then when you give your point of view, it's going to be very difficult for them to find yes, fault that's right. <laughs> without looking said, guilty. Because they already said they're tolerant. This is powerful. Ah, yeah. This is really, to, really powerful. <laughs> uh, because we're, 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 we, I, I see this a lot. I'm oh, like, oh, it's like, it's like, mm. Yeah, but the thing is, the, 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 the moment they crucify you, they're exactly doing what they're accusing you No, but you, you have are. to. But pull it out of them before, before you say it, before. Put it out there. So I know, I remember, one of my nurses, one of the nurses that asked that, uh, so what do you think about uh, same-sex marriage? But we know that those are two women that they said, they already told her that they're planning to get married, you know, and this and that. And she was like, and asked the nurse, what do you think about, you know, she didn't answer it. She said like, I'm not going to say my opinion. That's what you said. Well, th th this is the, the example he's going to use. And this approach is especially helpful when someone asks you what you think about homosexuality or related issue. Go down. This response capitalizes on the fact that there is no neutral ground in these That's kinds right. of discussions. Yeah. You've got to recognize it's not, there is not neutral. They think they are. Everybody not. has a point of view he thinks is right, and everybody judges the point of view of the other person. The Christian gets pigeonholed mm -hmm. as judgmental, but everyone is judging. He's judging too. So if you you set the foundation for the conversation, yeah. they, they can't, can't call you judgmental anymore. Because yeah. they're, 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 they're waiting to do that mm -hmm. because you disagree with them. Uh -huh. So it, you know, it's an inescapable consequence of believing explicitly, implicitly what the truth is, right? So this is a great yeah, example. Of, of where he, he, you set the foundation before you have the conversation. Before you answer the question. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. No, I, 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 no I, I, I see this at work. Yeah, like people would ask things like that. And well, you're kind of like, uh, am I going to get in trouble here or not? You know? <laughs> and, but if you say that first, then they're like, if they say they're tolerant, then go ahead and say, because they already said, if they get mad, they said, like, I thought you said you're, you're tolerant. 
You accept diverse so, opinions. So listen to this next one. This is another, this is a scenario, right? We've been talking about questions you can ask to get things rolling, but sometimes a question is asked of you that is not really a question, but rather it's a challenge mm -hmm. in disguise. Mm -hmm. so don't, don't fall for it. Like this one. What gives you the right to say someone else's religion is wrong? I got that. You I got, got that this. Question. I got that question. It, she didn't say it that way, but some sort of that's like, why do you think like other religions are, you know, just live them alone. They try to live a good life. They're not bothering anybody and blah, blah, blah. So, so listen to how he deals with this one. So I'm used to getting this response from non-Christians, but once I heard it from a fellow believer, implicit in her question was the statement, a challenge motivated no doubt by her mixed feelings about the subject. What right did she, as a Christian, have to lay a claim to the truth of her faith, thereby making all the other claims wrong? wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the fundamental yeah. comes down mm -hmm. to. The statement, questions like this one are hard to answer because the person's intent is not enter entirely clear. You don't actually know which side of the mm -hmm. it they're on. You're caught off guard. You're scratching your head. The remark has been worded like a question, but you're pretty sure that it's not one. So now what do you do? Well, often the best way to navigate this kind of situation is to simply point out that the question is confusing. I, I like this. Mm. Say, I get the impression that you think I've made a mistake here. Where did I go wrong? This will force a person to rephrase their question in the form of a statement, which is precisely what you want. Instead of being a question, make them formulate why they think what you said was wrong. Because it's been triggered by something you said, most likely. If it's, if it's blind, like the one you said, then you have to probably take it a little different. It's like... Uh, yeah, no, I know she's she's not, it, this is not the case. She's really like, why do I have to go? Yeah, well, why do I have to make everybody a Christian? Kind of like, the, the end game of that is, well, why? They're, they just leave them alone. They're not doing anything. They're trying to live a good life. And they're not bothering anybody. And they're like, you know, why? why you? I think I'm, uh, I I'm making like an assertion that I made an assertion that if Christianity is right. Well, in, instead of making the assertion, I think I'd go to Bill Wise's story about the the hunting cabin again. If, if as a Christian, wait, 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 if I believe there's one way to get to get to God, I would be hating you if I did not share it. I love you. That's the reason I'm sharing. Christians share their belief, not because they're trying to dictate the other person's conclusions. They're trying to give them good news. the good news. They're, they're trying to give them the, the, share, the thing share, that they're share, so share excited stuff. about. We're not doing it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Is it four o'clock already? Yes. Oh. And because God loves us, he's very clear that there's only one way. Thanks, yeah, Bye. Yeah, we're running late. This is this is good though, so I hope you don't mind us going a little a little later. So yeah, I think the idea is assert that you love them, but you you have your motivation. Your motivation, your motivation. And if they don't care about your motivation, then your conversation is done. It really yeah. Is. Well, you just tell them like you know, like what you said, like why is your motive? Why you're saying that? You know, I have a good stuff that's in me. I have a a good thing to share. So, of course, I want to share it. And if they don't want it, then they don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least I said something. You sowed the seed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, yep. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> I, I lost my place. Where were we? Say, I get the impression that you think over there. I oh, it did that something right. wrong. Yep. So, this forces them to read forward. So, as I was confronted on the issue, I explained that the question couldn't be taken at face value and i think it's honest to point out that i think you have a hidden agenda mm -hmm. without saying you have a hidden mm -hmm. agenda i need to understand more clearly what it well, is what you're it trying is to tell really me trying to get to. so did she really want to talk about rights or did she really want to know who was making the claim and what my credentials for making it are what my authority for speaking that's really what people usually ask and yeah. it's like 
what makes who you do you think you are yes. and what is the basis okay. you know your your perspective and and honestly it's probably not the first place to go yeah okay. it's, it's, it's it is. It is, but, but the, the key is you want to shrink the claim to a focused topic before you get into who has yeah. the authority to make the conversation about it. So uh, this is probably a, a fairly good place to stop. Let's, let's do just a little bit of this last one. So maybe you're not consider yourself uh, fast enough on your feet to keep up with someone who's quicker or more intense on the discussion. Yeah, I am. I'm right. not quick. I'm not quick to like so, think. It's no problem. You don't feel under pressure to immediately answer every question asked or respond to it at the time it's made. And I think that's a real key point here. Just because someone asks you a question, you're not obligated to be able to provide an answer. You're not. Because if you're not prepared to provide an answer or you're not sure what the answer is, you should reserve the right to step away from the conversation and figure out the answer. And the, and the other person's got to be, we have to do the same thing for the person we're talking. If they're, not, if they're not ready to answer the question, then you need to allow them the opportunity to go get information and then bring back it back off. to you. Yeah, back off. It's the back off. What is this? Take a neutral stance. Yeah. Like what? So for tactical reasons, you may want to adopt the posture of a neutral observer. Mm -hmm. As I said early, shift the argument mode back to fact-finding mode. Mm -hmm. Don't engage in an argument. Don't do what we do. Try <laughs> saying something like this. Interesting point. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, neutral. Be, be, be Interesting be, point. Be, I'd like to hear more. Let, together. <laughs> yeah, let me ask some questions about your view and the reasons for it. So I can understand it. And then I can go think about it. Yeah, and then think about it let me think about it. We can talk more later. Yeah? And we can I, talk more later. I think that's the best way to handle conversation because if you're not prepared and they're, they're dousing with, with all this evidence and references, if you don't know any of it, you're not prepared to have the conversation. So it's like, okay, let's, let's take some notes. Let's ask a couple more questions to clarify, and then let's schedule we'll to have this back. conversation another time. And I think it's, that's actually the appropriate way to yeah. have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get into a different tactic in one of the future, what they call the steamroller. That's the one that's just going like, to try to blow you we'll over blow with their, <laughs> their information. And we don't want to. We don't want to be steamrollers, but we don't want to get rolled either. So they're, they're, uh, when we get to that tactic, it's it's good to recognize it in yourself. We tend to be steamrollers, and 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 don't do that to people. And then the other part of it, if someone's doing that to you, how do you step out of the way so you don't get squashed by the the steamroller? <laughs> you know, at times, uh, for some of us, at times, we are seen to be defeated. Mm. You know, that, oh, you got. Well, that's kind of this, this last tactic he's talked about. It's like, okay, you know more about it than I do. So inform me. And Greg uses this, this approach. It's like, so you can beat on me slowly, slowly all right, slowly. and thoroughly so I can take it in. It, but you take that tactic. It, one, it, it, you, you take away all the burden of proof from yourself. And it diffuses. You, you become a student, student. fact-finding mode. And then once you've got the information from them, you stop the conversation and say, hey, now let me think about this and we can talk about it again. And I think it, it's an incredibly powerful technique. And it's, it's the right technique. And you have to be prepared if someone does it to you to, be, to honor this technique, right? It's like, okay, I got my information. Okay, time out. Now let's think about it and we can pick this up at a, a later date. Yeah, so well, these are good, good suggestions, you know. Uh, send, send him a, this again. Oh, good, good. How to get that. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah. There's a book that goes with it. If it, this is the full book. And well, like last time you should, one was um, the prop. Guide. This is the study guide. guide. No, this is the book. This is the book. There's more detail in the book. Yeah, the study guide is what we're going to try to go through. 
Yeah, it's Amazon, and it, it's it's pretty readily available. I like that one though. It's like, are you a tolerant person? You can say, right? exactly. I get that questions at work. I love, I love well, before that. you share your opinion, patients. I haven't got that question yet because they typically would consider me because I look younger. They think that I'm I'm on the that side. <laughs> and, but yeah, but I know I have a coworker that was asked like, "What do you think about same-sex marriage?" And she dodged the question. She didn't share her opinion. I think to make it clear, I would say, do you consider yourself an tolerant or intolerant yeah. person? That's the way I would say it. Yeah. 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 Are you open to are you open to other perspectives, opinions, and other people? Are you open to that? Well, you don't have to be. The key, are you going to judge me from my perspective? Yeah. Or is this is this a, 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 a question where we're going to share our views? Yeah. If you're going to judge me, then there's really no reason no, to have this I'm conversation. Not going to share it. I'm not going to share what I, but, what, what I think. But once they yeah, accept, yeah. Well, what, what accept that they're willing to listen, then yeah, they can't they, jump on yeah, you. they can't jump on back on you. That why are you, you like, you can blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, I thought you said, you said you <laughs> Yeah. No, that you think that uh, tactic for him to him. Every time that okay, I'm going to get something ugly. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's close with, close with a quick quick prayer, and then we can talk some more. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for showing us this technique. You, you, you did it when you were here, but it it helps for us to have it pointed out to us so we can kindly and and generously lead conversations hopefully toward you and and help us to do this lord so that we can remember when we're in the heat of that moment to to use questions to lead people in the direction you want them to be and i pray all these things in your name lord jesus amen so yeah tactics no, I, I appreciate the little antidotes he has in the study guide because he doesn't do it in the video. There's a, like a 30-minute video at the beginning. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll post it online if you want to want to see it. I, I, had, I didn't do last week yet just so I got busy doing other things this week, but I'll, I'll get them so they're posted. And, uh, no, it it's so non-threatening, though, the way he... And I've listened to some of his radio shows, and it's very interesting. People get really antagonistic with him. But he is very, it's like, okay, you know, and it, it, yeah, if you want to. <laughs> man, I, I need more of that character, yes, right? Yes. So it's good to learn from, from people that have the right character. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's, he's a, I, I like the way he's presented it. It's something that I think we can, we can learn and practice. Mm -hmm.